you find out the volume occupied by the particles in a particular unit cell divided by total volume of the unit cell into 100. This should give you the efficiency of packing. Now, to get find out the volume of particles what you do is you know the volume of a sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube in simple cube the number of spheres is just 1 because that is the effective number of particles in simple cube. Therefore, volume occupied by 1 sphere is going to be 4 by 3 pi r cube into 1 total volume of the unit cell is supposed to be a cube where a is the edge length the volume of a cube is a cube. So, this is the efficiency we will have to substitute the value of r here you know in the case of simple cube r is equal to a by 2 substituting a by 2 here it will be a by 2 whole cube divided by a cube. On working out this will come out to be 52 percentage. This a and a will get cancelled. It is a cube divided by a cube. You need to substitute the value of pi and work out it will come out to be 52 percentage. Now, we come to BCC. In BCC the volume of the particle is supposed to be 2 into 4 by 3 pi r cube the reason is in BCC the effective number of particles is 2 divided by a cube. Now, to get the efficiency what you do is 2 into 4 by 3 pi for r we need to substitute in terms of a because in the denominator you can see there are uh, the term available is a when you substituted this term this will become root 3 a divided by 4 whole cube divided by a cube. Here also you can see this a cube a cube will get cancelled work it out this will come out to be 68 percentage. Same way we will work it work out for the FCC also I am leaving this task of working out for FCC to you the answer I will tell you it is 74 percentage. So, as you can see FCC is the most efficient it comes to be 74 percentage simple cube is the least efficient because the packing fraction comes to be only 52 percentage. So, with this we will come to the end of this particular discussion. Uh, now, we move on to the next discussion we are trying to find out density of a crystal how exactly find out density of a crystal. Now, let us discuss about the density of a crystal. Let us take a simple cube where the particles are only at the corners. Do you think if you find out density of this particular unit cell will that be the density of the crystal as well? You find out the density of only the unit cell will that be the density of the crystal as well. Obviously, because your whole crystal is made up of so many such unit cells. So, you find out the density of the unit cell you get a density of the crystal. Now, how exactly we get density of a unit cell? You know density is is equal to mass by volume. So, if you can find out mass of this particular unit cell volume of the unit cell you can easily work out what a density is. Mass of the unit cell obviously will be mass of just one particle in simple cube because effective number of particles in simple cube is just one. Volume if you consider edge length as a the volume has to be a cube. So, what needs to be uh, substituted is mass of just one particle how will you get mass of one particle if you know the atomic mass of the particle let us assume that this crystal is made up of atoms 
atomic mass of the particle the mass of 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 number of atoms gives you the atomic mass if we express it in grams this would be 1 gram mole of the substance so if atomic mass is divided with avogadro number what you get is mass of one particle therefore your density would be atomic mass let's denote that by m avogadro number let's denote that by n0 and a cube this would be the density of simple cube there is a single particle so density is this number of particles is represented with a z in simple cube it is one so to find out the density of simple cube what you do is you are dividing mass with volume mass of one particle in simple cube would be atomic mass by avogadro number since it's a one particle the z will become one there is a single particle in simple cube divided by volume which is given by a cube now to find out density of bcc you just have to modify this expression the only difference would be z is 2 in bcc and in fcc it would be 4 the calculation is going to be same let's try to do a numerical based on this particular uh, concept the substance silver you know silver is a metal it exists in fcc silver metal crystal atomic mass of silver is 107.9 let's take it as 108 grams per mole if uh, the edge length of this crystal if you have to find out from which you also have to find out radius of the silver metal let us do a numerical based on this particular concept. The question is this, silver crystal is crystallizing, in, is crystallizing in FCC, atomic mass of silver is 108 grams per mole, density is 10.5 grams per cc. The question is to find out the edge length of the crystal, radius of the silver metal. So you need to find out A first from which you can find out R. Let us see how you do it. You know density is equal to atomic mass is 108. Z will be 4 because it is an FCC. N0 which is Avogadro number is 6.02 into 10 raised to 23. A is what you need to find out. Density is given to us which is 10.5 gram per cc. So A cube we will find out by working out. After getting A cube, find out cube root of that value which will give you the value of A which is edge length. The question is also to find out the radius of the sphere. You know in FCC there is a relation between A and R. The relationship is R is equal to 1 by 2 root 2 A. Once you have got the value of A substitute here you get the value of R. This is how you need to solve this numerical. Children, I solved one question for you on the basis of density. I would suggest you to solve so many questions. Now, this particular uh, formula is so important because you can find out Avogadro number, you can find out radius of a particle, you can as well find out density of a crystal from the density of a unit cell. So, please do try more questions from the textbook or from previous year's question papers. Let us move on to the next concept. Uh, when you arrange the particles, the way we arrange the particles when you study about a close packing. This is, uh, these are three particles in the first layer. You can see a void created here. Let us call that void triagonal void because it is in two dimension in one layer. Now when you keep the sphere in the next layer, suppose you use this particular void to keep the sphere. Now this 
void which is created now looks like a tetrahedral void. This sphere which I kept at the top is here. This is uh, kept on the void created by spheres which are kept in the first layer. Hope you are able to make out. The void which is created here is called a tetrahedral void. So this is one of the kinds of voids created when you arrange the particles in a crystal. There is one more uh, kind of void created. Let us see, suppose you keep the particles in the first layer like this. You can see a trigonal void created already in the first layer. Now when you keep the spheres in the second layer and you, the sphere is not kept in this particular void, suppose the spheres are kept like this. I will shade the spheres kept on the second layer so that you can easily make out. Can you tell me the kind of void created now? The void created by the spheres on the second layer and the spheres in the first layer. If you look at uh, uh, the arrangement, you will see that it is octahedral void. It is little difficult to understand why this void is called octahedral void. I will try to explain why it is octahedral void. If you can look at this particular sphere which I am drawing here, this sphere, now this sphere and this sphere, are those four spheres together making a plane. Now these four spheres here, one at the bottom and one at the top. It will look like a tetra octahedral arrangement. These four spheres in one plane, one at the bottom, one at the top. The void which is created here is called octahedral void. Now the question is, why do we study about all these voids? The reason being, it is possible that when a crystal is formed, these voids are utilized for the particles to accommodate. A particle can get accommodated here, a particle can get accommodated here, a particle can get accommodated in an octahedral void also. Depending on what is called a radius ratio, the kind of void created depends on the radius of the spheres. So only if a particle can accommodate there, the particle takes their place. Same, same is the case with tetrahedral void, same is the case with octahedral void. To give you an idea, I will explain sodium chloride where sodium ions remain in the octahedral void created by the chloride ions. Whereas uh, in zinc sulphate, you will see that zinc ions remain in the tetrahedral void created by SO4 2 minus ions. To give you an idea as to what, how it happens. I will draw the structure of sodium chloride to explain what an octahedral void is, how sodium ions take the place of octahedral void. So the structure you can see on the board is of sodium chloride. Obviously the particles which are small in size are supposed to be of cations, bigger size particles are supposed to be anions. Now if you can look at the part, uh, the crystal properly, can you look at uh, these four spheres, is it not making a plane of octahedral? Now there is one at the top, one at the bottom. See where the sodium ion is located. So this void is created by one, two, three, four in the plane. There is one at the top, one at the bottom, void is created here, that is where sodium ion is placed. Now why Na plus is placed here because it is a cation, the size of cation normally is less in size compared to anions. You also need to understand that the number of octahedral voids created always is equal to number of the spheres. So you will see sodium ion at every octahedral void created. Whereas if you look at single sulphate solution, single sulphate crystal, 
this uh, zinc ions are in tetrahedral void. So, number of tetrahedral void created is twice the number of spheres. Why it is twice is easy to understand. If you consider tetrahedral void, there is a void created here in the first layer. The void, the sphere at the top create one void here. At the bottom also one void will be created. So, number of voids created is twice the number of spheres, but zinc will be occupying only half the number of tetrahedral voids. Half the number of tetrahedral voids will remain empty. So, that is all about the discussion of this uh, voids. The last part of this chapter is called imperfections. I will just give you an idea about what imperfections are. The details of imperfections you may study from the textbook. When the particles are arranged in a crystal, there are supposed to be perfect order, but it is seen that there are always some deviation from this order. When there is a deviation, that deviation is called imperfection or defect. So, the defects can be of many types. Right now, you can see all the particles are orderly arranged. All the particles are at the places where they are supposed to be at. Suppose there is a defect in the crystal, you will see maybe these particles are not present at those places. Instead, it will occupy some interstitial places. Some part, some cases it will be totally missing. In some cases, there can be some impurities from outside. It all depends on the kind of defect produced. So, we classify defects into three, stoichiometric defect, non-stoichiometric defect and impurity defect. I will just give an idea about what they actually mean. By stoichiometric defect, what we mean is, suppose your substance is sodium chloride, the ratio between sodium and chlorine is 1 is to 1. If this ratio differs because of a defect, like if it comes to be 1.0.9, the ratio is different from what is expected, you have a non-stoichiometric defect. If it remains same, but still there is a defect in it, it is called a stoichiometric defect. Suppose the defect is because of some impurity, you call it impurity defect. The details of the defect, you may please study from the textbook. Thus, we come to the end of this particular chapter solid state. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you understood all the concepts. Please do try lots of questions, lots of numericals, not only from the back of the uh, exercise, from the back of the question, uh, uh, textbook, from the previous year's question papers also you can try some questions. All the very best. Thank you so much.